Mr. District Attorney, starring David Bryan. Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it shall be my duty as district attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. This is David Bryan. In a moment, we'll bring you another case from the files of Mr. District Attorney. But first, a word from our sponsor. And now, here is our star, David Bryan, as Paul Garrett. Mr. District Attorney. A district attorney and a criminal have only one thing in common. They both know the value of time. Each hour between the commission of a crime and the discovery of a crime means an hour more of freedom for the criminal. An hour more for the trail to grow cold. And sometimes the hours lengthen into years, as they did in this case. The time is 15 years ago. Martha! Martha! You want me, Dr. Ralph? Where's your husband? Well, he just went up to bed. Call him. I want to see him. Joe? Yeah? Come on down a minute. Doctor wants to see you. Be right there. Something's wrong, Doctor. What is it? Martha, I want your husband out of this house tonight. Why? Here's why. I've just been going over my bank statements. Two checks with my name forged on them. What makes I know all about him, Martha. Those two years he was away in Oklahoma. He wasn't in the Army. He was in prison. All right, Doc, so I was in prison. Is that any skin off your nose? I got a good mind to call the police about you. Maybe one lesson wasn't enough. You got me so scared, my knees are shaking. Joe. I, I'm sorry for your sake, Martha. You see what he is. I'm calling the police. Sure, Doc, and I'm just going to stand here and hold still for... Uh, give me those oh, iron teeth. Scary, man. Look out, the instrument oh, oh. You old fool. You lousy bucks, I'll show you. Joe, Joe. How's this for surgery? Uh. Him. I killed him, Joe. I'll send you to the electric chair. Shut up. They won't send me any place. Because nobody's going to know. Not ever. If I could write his name good enough to fool a bank, I can do it good enough to fool anybody. Stop falling and grab his feet. What are you going to do, Joe? Gonna take him out someplace and bury him. He was always talking about retiring. Well, now he's retired. The city grows a lot in 15 years. There are more people, new skyscrapers and schools and apartment buildings. The suburbs stretch out, and the vacant lots give way to rows of neat new houses. I don't have to walk the rest of the way, Chief. Where? Over by those pipes. Ditch they were digging for the sewer main. Workmen hit the box while they were excavating. House looks like a coffin. Mm. More like a crate of some kind. Almost fell apart when they dug it up. You'll see. 
It's uh, it's right behind that pilot gate. Who's that on guard? Malone, 53rd Precinct. This is the... Well, why don't you give him a break? Yeah. Take five, Malone. Get yourself some chow. Yep, there it is. Oh, uh, what's the mud here? Yeah. You've been a long time, Harrington. Yeah, maybe too long, Chief. Chances are we'll never even find out who he was. No less who killed him. If he was killed. It's a homicide, all right. You get the medical examiner's report already? No, but uh, look at this. Yeah. Broken scalpel blade. He wouldn't have been buried with that unless it happened to be in his body. Sure. That figures. With what? The medical examiner said there were two vertebrae chips in the spine. Might have been made by the scalpel if he was stabbed. That didn't mean he was stabbed in the back. For all the examiner noticed? That's all I heard him mention. Nothing to help us with the identification. No dental work. No, not even a filling. Teeth must have been cut. Well, what about the box? It'll be taken into the crime lab. Badly rotted, though. Yes. But it must have been pretty solid and expensive freight when it was new. Probably used for shipping a piece of machinery. We can find out what kind of machinery. Might tell us where the crate came from. Maybe. We already know one thing it was used for. A coffin. Yes, but that isn't what it was made for. And there comes the pickup wagon now. Whoever buried this, I guess they never expected it to be found, eh, Chief? I guess not, Harrington. Let's hope we're going to have one more surprise for them. Huh? They never expected to be caught, either. She's out of focus, Mueller. Turn it a little. Good. That's got it. Now let's have the other slide. Line them up slowly. Hold it. Now that's it, all right. Trace elements match perfectly. Type up the report and I'll sign it. If we... Hello, Sam. Oh, oh, hello, Harrington. Mr. Garrett. Go ahead, Mueller. What's that? Matching broken headlight glass. Hit and run case. <laughs> I suppose you're on my neck about that box again. Well, it's been five days, Sam. I know. The box was hard to restore, but this morning I think I got something. What? I'll know for sure in a few minutes. As soon as we get an answer to a teletype I put out. What do you think was in that box originally? Well, that's what I'm hoping to find out. It was a stumper, but well, from the size, shape, construction, and kind of wood used, everything points to an X-ray machine. X-ray? Yeah. That fit anything? Very strongly. The medical examiner says the murder weapon was a doctor's scalpel found in the box. Let's go into the teletype room, see if they've got anything yet. Who did you request information from? Police chiefs in a few cities where X-ray equipment is manufactured. It's a long shot, but we were able to restore part of a number stenciled on the crate. Ink soaked in pretty deep. It showed up under ultraviolet after we treated it. Think it might have been an invoice or a shipping number? We can hope so. It was a code letter, too. We couldn't quite make it out. Maybe the numbers were enough. Here we are. Anything on that crate yet, Kling? I can't hear you. He's pointing to that clipboard on the wall. Thanks. This is it, all right, Mr. Garrett. Only shipment to your city bearing code number you supply was for a machine sent for pay to Dr. William W. Rowe, 949 Willow Drive. That help, Mr. Garrett? It might. Plenty. Let's see the rest of that, Harrington. Yeah. Machine number X42L773. Service and parts department records show ownership transferred to Dr. Arnold Marks. Philadelphia. Almost 15 years ago. Looks like this Dr. Rowe is our man, Chief. Yes, if we can find him. We can try the address. Might still be there. I don't think so. A doctor doesn't buy an expensive x-ray machine and sell it in less than three months unless he's making a sudden move. 
You'd better get out there, though, Harrington. Check the neighborhood. I want a complete report in my office tomorrow morning. Is that you, Joe? Yeah. Come in here quick. Is there something else in the papers? No, nothing since that thing last week about them finding a body, but... What is it? Somebody was around the neighborhood all day yesterday asking questions. About Dr. Rowe? Yeah. Who could it be? That's a pretty dumb question, isn't it? Cops, who else could it be? Then they must have identified the body, Joe. Oh, how could they? Fifteen years? They must know something or they wouldn't be coming around. Joe, we better get out of here. That's all we have to do, run. We're going to sit tight. They can suspect all they want, but if they want to prove anything, they got a long way to go. What are you looking for? A gun. Where I put it? Joe, no, please. Right, go on. What good's a gun going to do you? It can only get you more trouble, more killing. Listen to me. You shut up and listen to me. I'm going to brazen this thing out, and so are you, as far as we can. Took a lot of thinking and planning and work to get us this place and everything we got. I ain't going to run off and leave it until I have to. But if I do have to, I'm going to make sure I can handle anybody who tries to stand in my way. In the bottom drawer, under the tablecloth. A box of bullets down in the basement. Get them. Bring some oil on the cleaning rack. Did you hear me? Arthur, if they come here, baby, you better watch your nerves. Because if you break, if you give me away, I'm going to have to use this. And I may use it on you first. You understand? Yeah, I report just about does it, Harrington. Yeah, I thought so too, Chief. The uh, medical examiner estimates the victim has been dead for 15 years. Dr. Rowe pulled stakes and moved out 15 years ago. He must have been running all right. Sold his house and furnishings to his housekeeper and her husband, eh? Did you see them? Well, I thought you'd want to talk to him yourself. The mail carrier on the route said they used to get letters from the doctor once in a while after he disappeared. I wish we knew who the victim was. Funny that Dr. Rowe could kill a man and get away so clean. No missing persons report filed about the same time. Somebody who might have been the victim. No, not a thing. A wanted bulletin? Not that it's going to do much good. Why not? Figure it out, Chief. The doc was about 60 years old. If he isn't dead by now... He'll be 75. Miss Miller. Yes, sir? Take the statistics on Dr. Rowe from this report of Harrington's. Have the police put out an all-points bulletin for his arrest. How shall I list the charge? Murder. Victim, John Doe. Identity unknown. They always ask when and where the suspect was last seen. Yes, I know. And this time, they're going to love the answer. Last seen in this city, 15 years ago. This is David Bryan. Before we continue with Mr. District Attorney, here's an important message I'd like you to hear. And now back to David Bryan, starring as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. Fifteen years between the commission of a murder and the discovery of it. Our chances of identifying the victim seemed almost hopeless. And our chances of apprehending the killer seemed even more hopeless. Dr. Rowe's picture was on the front page of every afternoon newspaper. But even if he weren't dead, a man can change a lot in 15 years. Only two people might be able to tell us where he was. In the entire world, only two people. See? 
You see what I tell you, Martha? <laughs> How's that for a hot one? Doctor sought for questioning about unidentified body. I told Joe, you. Joe. What? Outside, there's a car stopping. Let me see. There's two men looking at the house number. Could they be police? A oh, big one looks too well dressed. No, that's Garrett, the DA. They're going to come in. You answer. Don't get rattled. Where are you going? The incinerator. Ditch the newspaper. We don't know from nothing. Go ahead. Let him in. All right. Mrs. Franklin? Yes? Well, my name is Garrett. I'm the district attorney. This is Mr. Harrington. How do you do? How do you do? Well, we understand you used to keep house for Dr. Rowe. Well, may we come in? Well, yes. Yes, sure. This was the doctor's home, wasn't it? Why, yes, a long time ago. My husband and I bought it from him when he gave up his practice. Would you mind telling us exactly when that happened? It'll be 15 years in uh, March, I think. Oh, that's my husband. He was out back. Joe! Yeah, honey? Oh! Uh, this gentleman is the district attorney, and this is Mr... Yeah, uh, Harry. Joe Franklin. They want some information about Dr. Rowe. Have you heard from the doctor lately? No, not for a long time. Well, I guess it's uh, six or seven years since we had a letter, isn't it, Martha? Yes, that's about right. I don't suppose by any chance you kept any of his old letters. No, I just threw them out. Well, where was he living the last time you heard from him? It was um, Trenton, New Jersey, wasn't it, Joe? Yeah, Trenton. Well, do you remember the address? Um, he uh, he wrote to you about things you... You must have answered him. Well, we did, but he got his mail at the general delivery there. Why, something wrong? Is old Doc in any kind of trouble or anything? He came to tell us? Oh, we wish we knew. Haven't either of you seen this afternoon's newspaper? No, I usually go out and get them right after dinner. I'm going to ask you and your husband to search your memories, Mrs. Franklin. A few months before he went away, Dr. Rowe bought a new x-ray machine. Do you remember that? Well, I... Yeah, uh, he got it just about a week after uh, after I came back to town. I, I was away for a while in the Army. Well, I know. Can you remember what was done with the crate the machine I came in? Oh, it was like put out in the garage until... Uh, yeah. He took it with him. The empty crate? No, it wasn't empty. He took... It was pretty heavy. Yeah, the station wagon he had. Sudden decision, wasn't it? Well, yes, but he was always talking about retiring. I never thought he would, but that night he just decided... I'm going to be very honest with you, Mr. Franklin. When you helped to load that crate, I don't think you were loading medical. It contained a dead body. Body? What? Did the uh, doctor have any enemies trouble with any visitor the night he decided to leave? Patients, I have. Yes, there was. Oh. Doing with somebody in his office when we were stopping. You know who it was? No, the door to his office was closed. It must have been an hour or two later he woke us up and said he'd made up his mind to clear out. Whoever was with him was gone by then. Gone into that x-ray crate, if you ask me, Chief. Yes. Now, incidentally, what happened to all the doctor's equipment? He couldn't have taken it all with him. No, I, uh, I shipped it off to some other doctor he sold it to. When? Not long after he left. He said he'd be selling the stuff. Then he sent me a letter telling me where to send it. I don't remember the name of the other doctor. Well, that's all right. We do. Well, thank you for your help. Come on, Harrington. Right. Goodbye, folks. Good night. Good night. Well, what do you think, Chief? Well, I want you to catch the first plane out for Philadelphia. See the doctor who bought Rose equipment. I also want to check on the sale of the house to the Franklins, the sale of the station wagon. Everything the doctor disposed of. I, uh, I think they told us everything they know. I don't know, but I'm going to try and find out. Good morning, Miss Miller. Good morning, Mr. Garrett. Any word from Harrington? He called from the airport about 20 minutes ago. He's on his way in now. And there's a Mrs. Kibble waiting to see you. She's in your office. Did she say what she wants? It's about the Dr. Rowe case. She used to work for him before the Franklin. I'll see her right away. 
Oh, there's a few other things, Mr. Garrett. Uh, these records you wanted from the Motor Vehicle Bureau and the County Recorder's Office? They cover the sale of Dr. Rowe's house and car? Yes, sir. He... All right, take these papers down to the lab. Give them to Sam Jacobs. Tell him I want a comparison of the signatures on these documents with any signatures of Dr. Rowe made before the doctor's disappearance. Probably be able to get them from the state medical license application. Yes, sir. Mrs. Kibble, is it? That's right. I'm Mr. Garrett. I know who you are, young man. And I've come to tell you that I'm surprised at you. A man of your intelligence charging poor Dr. Rowe with murder. Doctor, help folks into the world, not out of it. Even if some of the patients he helped did turn against him and give him a tongue lashing after he retired. What made them do that, Mrs. Kibble? Because he sent them bills for what they owed him, that's why. I never could understand why he sent them myself. Never sent a bill to anybody before that. Not in the whole 20 years I was with it. I see. These bills the doctor sent after he retired, do you know where they came from? Mm -hmm. From the general delivery in Trenton, New Jersey. Not that I ever heard from him. 20 years. He never wrote to me after he ran off. Just the same, young man. He never killed anybody, neither. You just made me believe that, Mrs. Kibble. Because a man's character doesn't change overnight. If Dr. Rowe didn't send out any bills for 20 years, I doubt if he sent any from Trenton. But his patients got them all right. Yes, but I don't think they came from Dr. Rowe. Well, thank you very much for coming in, Mrs. Kibble. Thank you very much. Oh, oh excuse me, Chief. It's all right, Harrington. Goodbye, Mrs. Kibble. Goodbye. Who was that? Oh, a woman who kept the house for Dr. O before the Franklins. What did you find out from the doctor in Philadelphia? Well, just that he bought Rose equipment from an ad in a medical journal. The most important thing is this. Did he see Rowe personally? No. The whole transaction was handled by mail. Rose's address was General Delivery Trenton. Harrington, we've been looking for a man nobody has seen in 15 years. Yeah. We've been ignoring one possibility, though. Suppose Dr. Rowe isn't the killer. Suppose he's the dead man. Hmm. But how about this stuff the doc sold? And his letters to the Franklins? Sam's running a lab check on the doctor's signatures right now. While I'm waiting for it, you'd better get to the teletype room. Check Joe Franklin's army record, if any. And ask for a rundown for a possible criminal record in this or other states. Meet me in the lab when you get the answers. Right, Chief. Here are the enlargements, Mr. Garrett. The signature on top is a blow-up of Dr. Rowe's signature in a letter he sent to the AMA six months before he disappeared. The bottom signature is the one closing the sale of his house after he disappeared. Well, what do you think? It looked the same to me. The bottom of the signature is an excellent forgery. Quite a bit heavier in the flourish under the... Chief? Yes, Harrington. I got a run down on Franklin from Washington. If he was ever in the Army, they don't know about it. He's done time in the Oklahoma State Pen, though. On what charge? Just what you were looking for, Chief. Forgery. Use your phone, Sam. Help yourself, Mr. Garrett. Homicide? This is Garrett. Better get a squad car ready on the roll case. Harrington and I will meet him downstairs in two minutes. Let's go, Harrington. Right. Yes. Oh. Evening, Mrs. Franklin. Uh, Mr. Harrington, isn't it? Is your husband home? Well, he, he's busy right now fixing something down in the basement. Would you call him upstairs, please? Oh, those men out there on the uh, Just call your husband, huh? Don't try to warn him. It'll save a lot of trouble. There are men around the back, too. You, you know about Dr. Rowe, then? We do. Will you call him? Don't hurt him. Please. 
please don't hurt him. He's hurt us, Harrington. Right in the basement just went out. Malloy, get that woman quickly. The rest of you close in around the house. Flatten out, men. Get away from here! Get away, I'll get you for my car, I'll kill you! You've done all the killing you're going to do, Franklin. Chief. Yes, Harrington. I'm right near the basement staircase. I'll get down there for No, stay we are. Wait for him to come up. I'm not coming up. Yes, you are. All right, Kovacs. Put a tear gas shell through that window. Watch it, Harrington. That'll drive him up. I'm watching. <laughs> all right, Joe. Throw the gun down. Uh, oh, oh, God. Come on. Harrington. I'm all right, Chief. Came up shooting. I had a fire. Radio for Dr. Kovacs. All a doctor can do for him is sign a death certificate. Yeah. Actually, though, he signed his own death certificate. Huh? He signed it the first time he forged Dr. Rowe's signature. This is David Bryan. I hope you enjoyed this case from the files of Mr. District Attorney. I'll be back in just a moment after this message from our sponsor. star of Mr. District Attorney, David Bryan, with a word about the program you have just heard. The span of time covered by this case proves again that there is no such thing as the perfect crime, and that no criminal can ever sleep peacefully. Joe Franklin died resisting arrest. His wife, Martha, entered a plea of guilty to a charge of manslaughter, and is now serving sentence. This is David Bryan inviting you to join us when we present our next case based on the facts of crime from the file of Mr. District Attorney. Mr. District Attorney was originated by Phillips H. Lord. Mm-hmm.